Will you sell your soul for fame and money? In this video, we'll shed light on the darkness lurking behind our red carpets and spotlights. You'll hear real stories that will send shivers down your spine, revealing shocking bargains made in blood with the devil himself. After hearing these testimonials, you won't be able to dismiss this as just a myth. It seems the devil is everywhere, dominating movies, music, award shows, and yes, even the NFL. This might upset some of you because it involves celebrities you admire, but I encourage you to watch until the end. Let's uncover the hidden reality behind all the fame and glamour. So let's begin. The path to fame is often illuminated by the spotlight, but behind the curtains, shadows reveal the most intriguing stories. As we dive into the lives of the most celebrated names in the entertainment industry, we uncover a chilling pattern that's hard to ignore. First stop. A young man from Minnesota, Robert Zimmerman, stepped into the world as Bob Dylan, and seemingly overnight, his voice echoed across the globe. But was it mere talent and timing? Or was there something more, something darker? In an interview, Dylan himself admitted to making a deal with the commander-in-chief of this world and the world we don't see. In his own words, so let's hear what he has to say. Anything, I made a bargain with it, you know, long time ago and I'm holding up my end. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Shifting gears from Dylan, we delve into the world of Kanye West, a music industry pioneer. His thought-provoking ideas challenge our understanding of success. He explores how personal tragedies have cast a long shadow over the legacies of icons like Michael Jordan, Dr. Dre and Bill Cosby, revealing the hidden costs of fame. Kanye seems to suggest that the price of fame is far greater than we can ever imagine. My mama was sacrificed. Me too. You understand? Yeah. You appreciate Michael you. Jordan, what about him? His daddy, right? Bill Cosby, his son, right? Dr. Dre, his son. You're out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. The next one is ASAP Rocky. His path adds depth to this story. Consider achieving the height of your career only to discover that each album release is accompanied by a personal tragedy. These sorrowful events provoke reflection on the costs of success in the music industry. I don't know, man. Every time I put out an album, or every time I'm about to release an album, for some fucking strange reason, man, you know what I'm saying? I always lose somebody close to me. It was my pops, it was James, it was my sister. Like, I always lose somebody close to me, so, you know, shit feel like, you know, some crazy shit, like a jinx or some shit. Then there is Da Bobby, whose accomplishments in his career have been deeply affected by significant personal tragedy. The coincidence of his success with his father's passing highlights the often bittersweet reality of fame. His reflections on this experience provide a powerful lesson, one that might change your view of the glitter and glamour associated with being a celebrity. You really lost him the same day you hit number Swear one God, the show? the same time, not the... Nah, nah, it was Baby on Baby, it went like number one. Okay. Um, it went like number one on uh, Apple Music, iTunes. It was like number seven or something like that. And then uh, I got the phone call I ain't got the phone call with my, my brother woke me up. He like, hey, call your little brother. My little brother, my dad. So I call your little brother, he DM me. Oh, he woke me up. I'm like, I'm like, DM you, what's up? Pick up the phone, I call him. I'm halfway asleep. He yeah, bro, dad, bro, he dead, he died. I'm like, what? I set up in my bed, I'm like, what? Same time, Carter, he blowing my phone up. Blowing me up, blowing me up, blowing me up, blowing me up while I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I'm thinking he calling to deliver the same news. I click over, what's up, bro? We number one, man. Number one, you did it, you did it, I'm like. As we venture into these enigmatic depths, we are ready to uncover Christina Cheney's unsettling narrative. She describes a spine-chilling meeting with a powerful industry figure who ominously suggested that a deal with the devil could propel her to overnight fame. This, however, 
is just the tip of the iceberg. Cheney's story plunges into obscure territories, promising to unveil even more astonishing revelations and illuminate the darkest secrets of the quest for fame and success. So the very first time when I was working with this producer, we were working on my first album to get me shopped to get a, a major deal. And we were taking a break from recording this album and he took me around the studio and this is someone who's been in the industry, like he's worked with big names. And so he was like, hey, so you know that if you were to sell your soul to the devil, you can have instant fame tomorrow. And Wait, when he's, who said that? I, I really don't want to say his name. Oh, but it was a person. producer I was working with. Yes, a music wow. producer I was working with. He, he actually did. said those words. He actually said those words. And and he took me away from like my team so he had me by myself so it was like a whole lot happened in that moment like i like discernment happened in that moment for me that i i never really experienced before it was almost like he made a mistake in his career and he was using me to try to get to where he really wanted to be but he yeah. didn't want to sell his soul so he's like but if you sell your soul we can go high and it was like in that moment i received all this knowledge and and, and a huge just I can't what I can explain was like a something fell on me. The concept of sacrificing one's soul for quick success shifts from a simple metaphor to a reality for some individuals. The enticing promise of instant fame, wealth, and power can be irresistible. However, as we delve deeper, we discover that this route is fraught with hidden costs, prompting us to question the true value of such endeavors. The trade-off between vast public attention and significant personal sacrifice for temporary rewards makes us wonder if it is truly worth it. Does the genuine experience of fame, as revealed by those who have reached its pinnacle, expose a more troubling aspect of our desires and dreams? What is a common trait among most celebrities worldwide? Their path to fame and fortune frequently ends in profound despair. Despite their wealth, influence, and international recognition, their lives often culminate in deep unhappiness. Disturbingly, many people have been deceived into believing that emulating the lifestyle of these famous individuals is the secret to achieving happiness and fulfillment. Many lives have been wasted in the quest for happiness through the accumulation of riches, fame, power, participation in cult-like activities, promiscuity, and substance abuse. Analyzing top-tier celebrities, athletes, and icons in rock, pop, and hip-hop music reveals a consistent theme, a facade that conceals a reality of suffering, obscurity, and despair. So, let's move on to Katy Perry. She originally pursued a career as a Christian artist, but later acknowledged that she failed to find success in that field. She described her shift to a pop career as selling her soul to the devil, Let's listen to what she has to say about this. I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out. And so I sold my soul to the devil. Well, needless to say, sold my soul. It's hard, like I say, get on tour. And it's hard because I'm ashamed. I feel ashamed that I would even like have those thoughts, you know? I'd feel that low or that depressed, but... I so badly want to be Katherine Hudson that I don't even want to look like Katy Perry anymore sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Next, we have Madonna, who rose to prominence as the queen of pop in the 90s. To stay relevant at 64, she is engaged in controversial activities, including participating in orgies and creating provocative social media content. These actions often surpass eccentric behavior, edging into what some might describe as insane behavior. Her latest appearances have been perceived as mocking divinity, particularly Christianity, leading to interpretations and speculations that she may have sold her soul to the devil. Up next is Lady Gaga. She quickly rose to fame from a nobody to an international star almost overnight. According to her own words, she always felt like a loser rather than a winner, so she looked into dark places where most people wouldn't normally go, and she encourages everyone to do the same. This statement leaves a lot of room for interpretation. She continues by saying that she is religious, but 
worships her fans, meaning she worships attention and fame. Despite all of this, she is not happy. She struggles permanently with depression, anxiety, and other mental health issues that require her to be on medication continuously. I was never the winner. I was always the loser. And I, I really encourage people to look into the darkness and look into places that you would not normally look to find uniqueness and specialness because that's where the, the diamonds are hiding. I truly see God in my fans. They are, they are, they are who I worship is what I'm trying to say. And I believe what you worship in your life doesn't have to be religion or an institution or a certain kind of God. I have um, some sort of anxiety, depression, something that's changed my whole life. I, uh, I take antidepressant medication for it. I have tried to get off of it. My doctor always tells me not to, that it's not safe for me to. Whenever I've tried to, I've gotten very uh, neurotic, manic, sick. Moving on to the celebrated actor Brad Pitt, who shared his profound sense of void despite attaining vast wealth and fame. His admission reveals a profound spiritual emptiness within. Pitt confided in a Rolling Stone interview that the chase for material gains has left him and others feeling void, saying, Man, I know all these things are supposed to seem important to us. The car, the condo, our version of success. I say toss all this. We gotta find something else. But all I know is that at this point in time, we are headed for a dead end, a numbing of the soul, a complete atrophy of the spiritual being. I don't want that. The emphasis now is on success and personal gain. I'm telling you, that's not it. I'm the guy who's got everything. When you have everything, then you're just left with yourself. Home where I could really, really try on something different from myself. That was Satanism. It's working out really well. Uh, uh, it's, we, I made a pact. That's why the movie came out so well. No, it's not, but really dealing with, you, you know, you're told certain things as, as, as you grow up, and I, I'm a big believer, and you, you have to try things on for yourself and really figure out who you are and what works for you and what, what doesn't. And these are just the tip of the iceberg. It would take hours or even days to cover them all. However, the idea and trend remain the same, selling their soul for instant success. Some have admitted to this, while others have shown it through their music and videos that promote a lifestyle of embracing occultism, Satan worship, decadence, and promiscuity to a wider audience. But if you strip away all the fan adoration and international recognition, what remains is depression, loneliness, anxiety, and a tsunami of mental issues. Thanks for watching until the end. If you liked the content and wish to see more, don't forget to press the subscribe button. Until next time.